I feel like I'm on Soccer Saturday, mate. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Unbelievable, oh. Jeff. No. Yeah, well, in that, in, that ca- in that case, let's bring it out. There's been a red card, but for who, Anthony Costa? I don't know, that's there. <laughs> I, I thought it was sub. I thought he was going off for sub. Yeah. <laughs> We've got the guest we've all been waiting for, a man that I know certainly my mum loved back in the day, and I think she's watching now. It's Tottenham supporter, actor, and singer. You may know him from a little band called Blue. Ladies and gentlemen, let's welcome Mr. Anthony Costa. How you doing? How are you, sir? Are you well? Yeah, not bad, mate. Not bad. Just yeah, just chilling and. Yeah, just trying to, you know, count the, count the hours of the day, really. Watching the football. Now, first of all, thank you very much for coming on the show um, to yeah. obviously try and raise money and awareness for Libby. We're going to run through the scores in your love for Tottenham um, soon, later on in the hour. Um, but let's just kind of delve in to the wonderful days of Blue and being probably one of the most successful bands within England at the time. Do you run through and tell me what life was like in the uh, heyday of being in Blue? It was a great time, mate. It was a great time for music, great time to be, you know, in a, in a, in a pop band. Um, and for me, I'm so pleased that me and the boys did it then rather than trying to do it now. I think if we were trying to do it now, we'd have no chance. Uh, I think music's changed so much and it's all downloads and, iTunes and Spotify, and you just got to move with the times. But for us, it was all back in the day, selling cassettes, CDs, record players, re- records, you know, proper, you know, proper CDs, do you know what I mean? And uh, touring the world and meeting some great people and, and singing with some great people. So I'm uh, I'm very, very grateful with how, uh, you know, how, how, how our career sort of went. And so I guess the first thing, obviously, your band's called Blue. So where did the name for Blue come from? Oh, God. Uh, well, it was quite surreal, really, because we was on a train once uh, in uh, on the Northern Line, going from Edgware to uh, the West End, because we had a meeting with the record company. And we was all sitting there, and we was thinking, what, what can we be called? And what's a really good name? And uh, at the time, Pink was out uh, when she first came out, you know, 20 years ago. And we went, what about Blue? It was like, really? Do you think that's a really good name? Do you think it will? Do you think it will go? Do you think people will like it? And that's how we really got the name. It was just a, a matter of taking the mick out of ourselves and going, to "What about blue?" And uh, that's what happened. And obviously, there was some band members with yourself, including the uh, likes of Simon Webb and Duncan yeah. James. So, yeah. How did you guys meet and become oh, obviously the band that you became? Oh, it's a it's a it's a long story, mate. But to cut a long story short, we all met each other on, on the audition circuit, uh, on di- you know going for auditions for different bands and different sort of acts. And me and the boys, uh, I met Bunk at an audition, really got friendly. Then I met si- I met Lee at another audition, and Lee and Dunk had met, and it was all sort of really surreal how we all met without knowing that we all met. And then Simon was the last to join because uh, he came down from Manchester. And was living with Lee at the time, so it was. Uh, it was. I think it was fate. You know, I hate to sound cheesy, but it was fate that brought us together, for sure. And the biggest songs you've probably done are "All Rise" and "One Love." They're probably, if you say to somebody, "Name a blues song," it's going to be one yeah. of those two that okay. they name. But what was your favourite song um, that the band produced? Oh God, it depends what it depends what mood I'm in, fella. Um, <laughs> I think if I'm if I'm thinking about the tour, I think One Love was the, probably the best song that we did as a, as a live, you know, at an arena, so to speak. Um, I like the ballads as well. As I said, it just depends. I think One Love edges it a little bit, though. 
And when you look into your bio, um, like your Wikipedia page, which we all know is the best source of information, and I say that sarcastically. Yeah, yeah, exactly. You're dubbed as a singer and an actor. So let's just talk about the difference between singing and acting and what the crossover between the pair is. For me, acting is my passion. That's what I grew up in. I, I was acting since I was a kid. I, uh, I was in programmes, a couple of BBC comedies. I was in Grange Hill. For those of you that are watching, it was a school programme, a uh, school drama. Um, and that was my passion. And it just got to a stage where my voice was breaking. I loved singing, but it was always in the back of my mind, you know. Um, so I started singing and, you know, vocal training and learning, you know, learning about my voice and, and, and structure and that. But it, acting would always be my passion, mate. You know, I love being someone else for like two hours on stage if I'm doing a musical or two hours or three hours in a film if I do, you know, a short film and stuff. That to me is, is where I, where, what I love is where I love for sure. Now, this is a football show. And obviously, yeah. we know you're very keen to talk about the football. Yeah. Although your band's called Blue, your probably biggest rivals alongside Arsenal are the Blues. And of course, you're a massive Tottenham Hotspur supporter. Um, so how did that kind of work when you was touring this, that and the other? Did you like actually, although you on stage here, there and everywhere, performing to millions of people um, throughout the years, was there a part of you that thought, Part of me just wants to be at White Hart Lane right now. All the time. Um, I remember being on stage. God, I remember being on stage in Singapore, and I uh, Spurs were playing Arsenal at the time, and we was on stage, and uh, I literally walked off stage. Not, you know, not rudely. I, I, while one of the lads was talking, I walked off stage to check the score. Do you know what I mean? And I kept looking over at my old tour manager, going, "What's the score? What's the score?" And uh, you know, I think we won that game. I think we beat him two one. But yeah, it was it was a great day for me because A we had a really good gig and B we beat Arsenal. So uh, yeah, I was always I was so obsessed with Spurs. Like I I plan my day. I plan my you know I'd make sure I'd get if we were flying for example I'd make sure I'd get to the airport two hours before if Spurs were playing and try and watch the game or if we landed at a certain time I'd run to the you know, to the nearest pub in you know wherever we are, Germany or Sweden and stuff, and, and watch the game. So I try to watch it as much as possible. Now I've got so much time on my hands; it's it's, it's lovely because I can get to watch it and be depressed at the same time. Uh, what you know, in these days. Well, now we've got a video coming up before we look at the scores from a man which um, may have just been one of your childhood heroes growing up supporting Tottenham. So let's have a look at this little message from Teddy Sheringham. Wow. Hello everyone, I'm Teddy Sherman and I'm here to ask for your help. We really, really, really need your help. There's a little girl called Libby Cotts who is in desperate need of a bone marrow donor. Please go to her Instagram page at libbies.lockdown and click on the link in her bio for full details on how we can help to save her life. Thank you. What a ledge. What a legend. Yeah, of course, that was a message from Teddy Sheringham um, asking you to try and donate money, and uh, raise money and try and find a bone marrow donor for Libby. Um, so I guess let's, before we talk about the scores, let's talk about your memories of Teddy Sheringham in a Tottenham shirt. Oh, wow. Well, you know, I grew up in, you know, I was born in 81, a month after we won the FA Cup. So the 90s for me was the time, you know, I was 19 years old and I was, you know, that's when my love for Spurs, you know, was as it is today. Um, Sheridan was a great player. I think him and Klinsman for me were my favourite, one of my favourite duos at Spurs ever, partnership-wise. You know, you could talk about Berber, and Robbie Keane. I usually ask a question about your five-a-side football team with footballers you've played with um, or played against. So yeah. how about we make a five-a-side football team made out of the best singers that you've kind of toured with or you've um, been on the same tours as? Um, yeah. And to make this question easier, let's disinclude the boys that are in blue. Yeah, of course. All right. You ready? Yep, go on. 
Uh, Elton John, Stevie Wonder, Tom Jones, uh, been on the same stage as Tom Jones and Phil Collins as well. And, oh, God. And, I, and I've met my hero. I've never sung with him and because he's, he's, he's unfortunately passed away a few years ago now, and that's George Michael. But meeting him was probably, was just, they, they say never meet your heroes, but I'm so pleased I did because we're an absolute legend, a, a diamond of a man, and uh, he's the reason why I started singing, really. Well, as for a football team, you probably may lose that, but for a singers, that is a, <laughs> a, a wonderful... For, for singing-wise, no one's touching that. <laughs> for singing-wise, you're correct. Now, yeah. um, I did just have a question popped into my head. You, you mentioned Elton John. Now, um, people that yeah. may not know this, um, one, yeah, I don't believe he does now, but at the time, Elton John owned Watford Football Club. So... Has yeah. anything, obviously you're a massive passionate fan about Tottenham, you've got connections within Long League. Have you ever looked into getting into being on the board at a football club or being an investor within a football club? Um, I think I've always flirted with the idea. I thought, oh, would I be up that? Then I think, myself, would I be taken seriously? Do I need people being, you know, abusive and all that? I, I would just do it because I love football so much. But for me, I'd never say never, for sure. But you know, if Tottenham come running and, and said, "Look, we need, you know, we need you to get get a, uh, you know, to, to entertain us at half time and get, you know, start singing," I'll, I'll be there in a heartbeat. But in in non leagy terms, yeah, I'd love to maybe get involved one way or another, you know. But I, I just people sort of see me as, "Oh, you're just a singer," and when they when you sort of say, "Well, no, I'm a football fan as well," and start talking football. They, they, people want to judge you before you've even opened your mouth. So I'd rather not have that headache. But then a part of me thinks, well, sod that. I, I want to do what I want to do. But yeah, you never know, mate. Never know. Well, like you say, Dumbo's down the road. We could probably get you on the board um, with <laughs> Dumbo. That would be great. At least yeah, the yeah, entertainment yeah. would be good after one the game. Of my, one, of my, one of my close friends, Kiparisi, he's, uh, he's on the board at Saffron Walden. So I've been to Saffron Walden a few times and... Uh, yeah, they're, they're, they're a good bunch of lads. And uh, Razor Ruddock as well. He's on the board at um, Enfield, Enfield FC. So I've seen a lot, a lot of non-league this year, for sure. Before, obviously, before they closed everything down. Yeah, it's a laugh. It's a good crack. So obviously, you have your opinion as a Tottenham fan. Pochettino yeah. left. Uh, yeah. Mourinho come in. And let's just say, obviously, I've got loads of friends who are Tottenham supporters, loads of family yeah. at Tottenham. What they say? Uh, so it seems to be Tottenham or Orion in my family, really. Um, let's be honest, Tottenham aren't doing as well as they probably should be. Is that down to the manager or is that down to the players? It's down to both, I'll be honest with you, mate. Um, there's some, I think bar four or five players, obviously, you came, you saw you and Dombele, you're Hoybier, uh, and, and you, know, you have to put Larice in there as well. I think the squad's not good enough anymore. I think there's some players that have been there for far too many years. I think it's just gone stale. And with Mourinho, you've got, you know, he likes to spend money, as we know, at every club he's been to. But he has been back this season. He has brought in the players that he wanted. Uh, and you've got to question yourself, do them players want it? Because what I saw the other night on Thursday against Chelsea for a London derby, it, it was like a, a bad training session. It was like they couldn't be bothered training session. And, and as a Tottenham supporter, that wasn't nice to see. No matter who's in charge, you've got to go out there and wear that badge. Do you know what I mean? And uh, it's it was a sad state of affairs. And especially the, the loss to Brighton as well. And this is it's not good at the moment. And I think, oh, I hate to say, I think Mourinho's got one or two games left in him. And if he don't do any good, then I think he's gone. Yeah, I, I think, uh, do you know, I said this to my friends when um, Mourinho got in, like, in charge of Tottenham. Everyone, people were going, oh, like, having my point of view. And then people go, oh, my God, Mourinho, the special one. Yeah, I was, I was, yeah. Let's be honest, and this is my opinion. Obviously, no disrespect to Jose. I'm sure he's a lovely, lovely man. He is not the manager he was at Chelsea the first time round. I think he got found out at Man United. I think he's getting found out at Tottenham and he got found out to some degree at Chelsea the second time around. So 
I don't think the Josie Mourinho at Tottenham now is the special, the special one that was at Porto and Chelsea first of all. No, I, I, I come, I tend to agree with what you're saying there. I think, uh, I think when Mourinho, as we know, first came, he was a special one, as you said, he was excited, he was new. Um, you know, we always had the Alex Ferguson and Arsene Wenger, the battles, but then it was uh, Mourinho and Wenger. And I think for us, it wasn't. It's not good enough. For Saying who would Anthony Costa want to replace Josie Mourinho? Oh, good question, Mark. Uh, I think if, if if it goes doesn't go to, to plan with Mourinho, as I said, the next few games they're going to have to bring an interim in. Uh, ideally, someone like like Redknapp, like a Hoddle to steady the ship, and then look to get someone like Nagelsmann from RB Leipzig in the summer. But with someone like that, he's young. So you've got to give him a plan. You can't give him, you know, an 18-month contract because you know how it is with Klopp. It took two, three years before he got the, the players that he wanted to build on becoming champions. So if you get someone like Nagelsmann, I'll, I'll be happy with that. Or my, uh, my other candidate would be Brendan Rodgers. Some good choices there. Now, a quick um, message from um, that's been forwarded to me is um, in terms of the um, like ratio to men and women who are likely to be a match for Libby, the stats are about one in 200 men are likely to be a match and women are one in 800 um, to be a match. Of course, gentlemen, we're all watching yeah. this. We all love football. Um, whether you support Spurs like Anthony, Leighton Orient and Harlow like me, whether you unfortunately support Chelsea like my boss, we all love football. Um, but let's just have a quick message from one of um, the music community, which is somebody I'm sure that Anthony will know quite well. Uh, we won't say who he is until he comes up. And um, this is his message towards you guys about trying to raise money and awareness for Libby. Hi, guys. So I'm here to talk to you today about a beautiful little girl called Libby. Libby's only 12 years old and sadly her family received the news that she's suffering from severe aplastic anemia. The only cure is a bone marrow transplant. In the last few months, she's been relying on weekly blood and platelet transfusions to keep her well, to keep her alive. But the only real fix to save her life is a bone marrow transplant. And this is where I'm urging you to help, to literally be a lifesaver. Libby's time for survival is running out. This is literally a matter of life and death. Libby's family are desperately trying to find a donor with the help of Anthony Nolan Charity and DKMS. Now for every 40 pounds they receive, they can process and look after one new potential stem cell donor, which is the key to those life-saving matches. First of all, if you can, please donate to help save Libby and thousands of other people around the world. If you can't donate, that doesn't matter. You can still register to receive a testing kit. It's very simple. I'm gonna show you now how it's done. Okay, so this is the testing kit. It's really simple. There's three swabs in the packet and all you do is put this inside your cheek and take a sample for about 60 seconds. So there's my three swabs. Um, obviously it's not painful, it's not invasive. You're just literally rubbing the inside of your cheeks around your gums. Um, I place them into this wallet and then into the free post envelope and get that sent off. It's as simple as that. So as I said, the charities are running low on funds. So if you can donate, even if you just cover the cost of your own test, which is 40 pounds, that'd be amazing. If you can't, don't worry. It's just really important to register to get your Lifesaver kit. Now, if unfortunately you're not a match for Libby, you could still be a match for someone else in the world who needs this life-saving blood stem cell treatment. Now, I don't often ask you to share anything of mine but this is a matter of life and death so please share this far and wide so we can raise as much awareness as possible and you could save libby's precious life thank you you get yourself you know do whatever you can do isn't it guys and uh girls you know just 
you know, put your hand in your pocket and, and whatever you've got, let, let's, let's, let's raise some money, man. Let's raise some cash, for sure. And I've obviously got my boss in the background um, helping me out here. And he's asked a question to you. Um, what would you be your England squad for the Euros come May or come June, should it go ahead? Are we, are we, am, I, am I naming the whole squad or just players that I think? Just, yeah, just players that you think maybe should be included that haven't been really there or thereabouts. Um, in, 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 let's say who wasn't at the World Cup, let's say that. Oh, Grealish, Jack Grealish for me, 100%. Um, I'm going to say this now, he's the nearest to Gaza that I've seen in a long, long time. Uh, I think I'm just watching on and off the, the Arsenal, Aston Villa game now. He's, he, you know, he's up on the show. Um, I just lo I love everything about Grealish. I think he's a fantastic player. Uh, Declan Rice should be in there as well. Um, yeah, I think he's having a really good season for West Ham. I hate to say it because I'm, I'm not I'm not, so I'm not a West Ham fan. Um, mm -hmm. <laughs> Harry Kane, obviously, he's got to be there. He's the main man. Um, just trying to think, who else is out there, fella? Who else is out there? Let's throw me some names. Let's have a chat. Um, I think, yeah. I can't think of any now, mate, off the top of my head. <laughs> it's hard when you get asked. Yeah. It is a hard one. So I've got no names in front of me. Do you know what I mean? You know, you're like, oh, here go. I wouldn't take him. I'll take him. Uh, I think the back four sort of speaks for itself, really. Um, I'd personally replace Dyer, but that's just me. Um, Harry Winks shouldn't be in the squad. I don't, I don't rate him at all, unfortunately. I'm sorry to say. I hate to be aware of bad news. I'm not a fan. Uh, I think he's a good player, but not to the, unfortunately, not to the level that we want to get to eventually. So, yeah, that's it, really, mate. That's all I can, a bit of a down of that one. Sorry about that, peeps, but uh, that's all I can think of, isn't it? So, I guess and the big question, the, sorry, the, what we will say for the, for the listeners, if we're talking over each other, it's because there is a bit of an internet delay. So, obviously, we apologise about that. I guess the big question is, do we trust Jordan Pickford or who else do we choose to start in goal for the um, Euros? Nick Pope, mate, all day long. I want, I want, I want Spurs to go in for Nick Pope next this season, mate. I think he's a wicked keeper. Uh, he's at a good club like Burnley, but I think he can excel at uh, another club with, you know, good other, you know, with better players around him. I'm not saying Burnley are, are not great, but you know, the, a better, better defence in front of him and, and all that. I think he's a really, really good keeper. Uh, yeah, he'd be my pick for sure. And you just, we'll feel, I just when I watch, when I watch Bernie, you just feel like he's gonna be all right. He doesn't. He's not calamitous. Do you know what I mean? He's not silly. He makes good decisions. He comes out. He, he, he's a good shot stopper as well. And I think that's what England need. They need someone, you know, um, strong. You know, in between the sticks. We'll keep on the England theme now. I was born in 1995, so the what? only things I'm. Yeah. Oh, 25, oh, yeah. Oh, dear Lord. Okay, go on. Go on. <laughs> Make me feel old. Go on, mate. <laughs> so, my only memories of 1990 are from watching on telly, uh, like watching on telly, like from like documentaries, yeah. this, that, the other. But obviously, I was around for the 2018 World Cup. I really loved that up until um, Croatia got their equaliser. I think when Kip, uh, Kieran Trippier scored the free kick, against Croatia, my life peaked at that moment. I don't think I've ever felt better in my life. But my question for you, having been around for both, for you, 1990 or 2018, what meant more and what was a better 90, tournament? 1990, mate. 1990 all day long. All day long. 94 was, wasn't great because obviously we weren't there, but 1990 for me, I just remember I, I was living in Cyprus, uh, and just, just watching Gaza, man. Just, it was just, just watching Gaza doing his thing, do you know what I mean? Doing the Cruyff turn in front of Holland, do you know what I'm saying? And and then the best memories was you watching in the game and you know, if they'd win and 
you go in your garden and you start reenacting or trying to reenact. That to me is, is the beauty of the World Cup. You start seeing all these different players from around the world. Scalacci, uh, Baggio, uh, obviously Maradona, the, the, one of the best players, the best player of all time. I, I, I'm lucky enough to see him. Um, yeah, you just it's just phenomenal, mate. And 1990 was a fantastic World Cup for me. But 96 was the best Euros. Best Euros bar, bar none. No, no, well, obviously, I was arrived. I was arrived. I was around in '96 for Euros, but I've probably been. No, mate, you're, you're still having like bottled milk, bro. <laughs> yeah, I was about <laughs> nine, ten months old. Um, I'm so just socks I... older than you, man. What? <laughs> we won't ask what those socks were used for. <laughs> so, I guess. Um, like you said, you've, you've lived in Cyprus and toured all around Europe and the world. Did you ever get a chance to kind of go to a stadium out there and watch a football game or perform in somebody's stadium and have a walk around yeah. and see all like, the history? Yeah, never actually went to see any matches because for some reason our management used to just book us gigs where, um, you know, it was nowhere near a football pitch or anything else. So that was always a bit of a, a bit hard to take. But... I think something for me was when me and the boys performed at the uh, Stade de Rome uh, in front of 35,000 people. Uh, one of our last ever blue gigs back in 2005. And uh, I met Christian Vieri and he gave me one of his signed tops as well. And uh, yeah, that was a, it was a fantastic time. And who was there? Who else was there? It was Vieri was there. And do you remember that? The Italian rep, what was his name? Kalina. The bald one, like scary bald face. Guy. Yeah, scary face. He was there as well. He brought his kids along because they were blue fans. So yeah, that was my favourite gig in terms of being in a stadium for sure. And you, you, this has just prompted me purely from obviously that question you uh, that answer you said about the referee. What being next? He was a blue fan. Have any of your takeaway? Obviously, George Michael. Have any of your heroes growing up from Tottenham like? Tottenham days or anyone yeah. that you've liked actually come and watch the show and you've been like, wow, they actually, yeah, they're a well, fan of me, but I'm a fan yeah. of them. Uh, the, 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 the late, amazing man, Justin Edinburgh, brought his kids along. Uh, and I, obviously, you, you know him because of Leighton Orient, I know him because of Spurs. Um, what a lovely, lovely man. He brought his kids along who were young at the time. And he came to Wembley and uh, I, obviously I didn't know he was there. He managed to get backstage because he knew one of the, one of the guys working at Wembley. And uh, my old tour manager said, look, there's a, someone that wants to say hello to you. He knows that you're a Spurs fan. So I went there and it was, you know, it was the late, great, you know, Justin Edinburgh. And uh, we had a chat. I, I asked him about, you know, the 1999 League Cup final when him and, uh, him and Savage had a bit of a to-do bit of a tear up on the pitch and he laughed he said yeah it's just football but you know what a lovely lovely man he was yeah I've, I'm, unfortunately i never well i say i never got the privilege to meet him i ran past him when we ran on the pitch when uh, <laughs> late, late on Monday. um but yeah obviously a lovely guy and obviously charlie his son's doing a lot of work um in the background to try and raise money through the JE Free Foundation. Yeah. Um, lovely man, and, lovely boy. Yeah. Lovely boy. Uh, Beckham as well. Lovely boy. Beckham, was, Beckham came once to a gig. Uh because I knew his sister really well and his mum. They came, they brought their son. Brooklyn, he was like a baby in arms. He was only about two or three. Uh, Wayne Rooney came to see us with Colleen when he first burst onto the scene up in Manchester. Uh, he came when he was still at Everton. That's how long ago. So before he went to Man United, yeah, and uh, yeah, we I gave him a prop of one of the tours, one of the things that we gave him. And, uh, yeah, lovely, lovely guy. Jesus. Now you you you've, you've said that you've uh, played in um, obviously charity games here and there. Yeah. Um, what kind of charity games were they? What were the teams? Where were they hosted? And um, yeah. did you not make anyone? No, no, I never had a chance to not make anyone. But uh, it was a, a charity foundation called Celebrity, Celebrity uh, Soccer. Uh, we, we toured around the UK, you know, not toured, but we went to different places, uh, Everton, Sunderland, uh, Swansea, Boston United, Notts County, uh, 
There's one, hopefully, at the end, by the end of the year at Plymouth Argyle. There's there's loads, mate. There's loads. Norwich City, I played at. I played at Norwich, Swansea. Uh, I played at Swansea twice and Norwich twice. Yeah, they're the ones that stick out for me. I scored a screamer at Swansea, though. I'll never forget that. That was blinding. Um, <laughs> I scored against I scored against Terry Alderton. Oh, and I just hit a post. Um, Terry Alderton, uh, the comedian. I scored. I scored. I loved him from uh, just outside the yeah, just outside the box. But it's Sorry. always for different. It's always for different um, charities. Birmingham City as well. Uh, I played a few times. So yeah, we get some good stadium. You know, it's normally like ten, twelve thousand people. So it's great. Is this the same um, organisation as on Twitter as Celebs FC? No, it's Celebrity S E L L E B R. I T Y. What do you think of VAR? I think I've, I get why it's there. Um, I think that, but the decisions are just inconsistent all the time. Like when we played Newcastle this season, and you know we're all over and we're winning one 0 and they get a penalty in the ninety third minute for a handball. It wasn't a handball because he's looking away from the ball, and then three days later they change the rule. It's like, well, hold on a minute, that's just cost us three points. You need to be consistent. And the refs, unfortunately, they have to come out in press conferences or be interviewed and say, this is the reason why I gave that decision, you know, because it's just it's just frustrating for us fans because we don't know what's right. We can't celebrate a goal really anymore because we're just thinking what's going to happen. And it's and, and it, it takes a long time as well. Come on. It, I mean, rugby yeah. got it spot on. You know, rugby got it within like five seconds. Football, they got to go to the monitor talk to their mates, have a cup of tea, put their feet up, you know, it just, it just takes so, so long. Um, I guess we'll ask you, you're a Tottenham fan, so you may give a controversial answer, but David Luiz getting sent off the other day for yeah, that nothing. Is that a red? No, 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 it's not. And it pains me to say it's not a red. He's been harshly done this, to be honest with you, mate. Let's talk, let's talk, if we're going to talk football and decisions, that was the wrong decision. It was lovely to see because obviously they were down to nine men, but <laughs> take, taking my Tottenham Hotspur hat off, it wasn't a sending off. It certainly weren't a penalty either. So we, we, we've got you for 13 minutes before obviously you've got yeah. to do what else you've got to do. So I'm going to ask you some quick fire questions. You go, and mate. You go. They're not going to be easy. So first of all, Tottenham's, Tottenham Hotspur never existed. Who do you support? Oh, mate, don't do this to me, man. I've, I've never, ever thought of that. I'm just going to go Barnet, Barnet FC, because they were my nearest team back in the day. Barnet FC. Okay. So, so you'd have supported Barnet if Tottenham didn't exist, exist. You can't sing and you can't act. What do you do for a career? Footballer. <laughs> <laughs> I knew that was coming. Guess, I'm guessing playing for Barnet then. Yeah, well, you never know. They, you know, but I, I, I just that question just thrown me, mate. I mean, I've never ever been asked that in my life. So, sorry to any Barnet fans out there, but yeah, Tottenham, Tottenham's my one, my, my one love. Excuse the pun. Um, I've just had this question asked. Would you buy anything red? No, nah, mate. No, nah, nah. <laughs> no. No. Do you know what? I moved into this this house where I'm at at the moment, and. Uh, there was a red wall and it just, I was like, that's definitely going. That is like 100. <laughs> Before I even move in, that is going. I, I, I don't, I'm not even a fan of the colour red. That's how bad it is. Okay, next question. You never met the boys from Blue, but you could be in any other English band um, throughout history. What band would you have been in? Take that. Or the Beatles. <laughs> <laughs> I wouldn't mind being a pound behind John Lennon or Paul McCartney, God rest their souls. Well, not, not Paul McCartney, but John Lennon. Right, well, let's think. I'm making these up on the spot, so let's think of some more, more quick fire questions. So, oh, here's one. All right, then. All right, let me ask you. Leighton Orient. Oh, okay, go on. Leighton Orient are playing Hollow Town in the, in the FA Cup final. And you've got to pick one. Oh, thanks for joining Andy Costa. I bet he's now going. Um, I don't know. 
You got the golden Deal. ticket. You got the golden ticket, the best ticket in the house, but you can only sit with one set of fans. Oh, mate. Do you know what? They play each other in friendlies, and I just sit there and clap every goal. I don't really like sing when oh, it's such a hard question. Um, don't know. I think, do you know what? I think, looking at it from a business point of view, I think you've got to say Harlow Town because purely for Harlow, winning the FA Cup, the money alone will keep that club going. Yeah. Is Chris Bourne, is Bourne still there? Chris Bourne? Yeah. Um, he was assistant manager, but I don't know if he's staying there for next season. He was there and then obviously the season stopped. So, um, so I don't know. So, nice guy. Nice guy. Now I'm going to ask you a more difficult question. After that horrible one. <laughs> <laughs> you can be any of the uh, members in blue. So you can be any of them. You can be Duncan, Simon, etc. Yeah. You can't be yourself. Who are you being and why? Uh, I'll be Simon because he's just chilled. Oh, when, when I watch football with Simon, because he's a United fan, when I watch football with him, like if, if United are playing Spurs, I'm like up and down, left and right, going mad. And Simon just sits there because he knows that he knows that United are going to beat us. He just sits there like with a smile on his face. And it's like, oh, I'd love to be you, being a United fan, knowing that you're going to win most games. You know what I mean? And he just sits there like, yeah, man, yeah, man. <laughs> so, uh, yeah. So, it'd be, it'd be webby, mate. It'd be webby. <laughs> just because of his calmness. So, okay. So, now, now, now let's make him Tottenham related. Go on. I, only, so, basically, I'm going to give you two players. Only so two Tottenham players that have ever played previously or now. Only one of them would have ever played for Tottenham. So I'm going to give you give you the names. So we will start off. Gareth Bale, Luka Modric. Gareth Bale. Harry Kane, Jermaine Defoe. Harry Kane. And I hate that. I hate that question because I love I love JD. <laughs> um, right. Let's have a. Let's, let, let's think. Let's let's go back. Let's think. Casey Keller, Brad Friedel. Friedel, man. <laughs> what to play for Spurs? Yeah, Brad Friedel. Yeah, 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 yeah. To play for Spurs, yeah. you got yeah, Brad okay. Friedel. Nico guy. Cranshaw or Peter Crouch. Well, you know Cranshaw and Crouchy. Um, <laughs> and I, 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 I think Crouchy, man, because he's just he's. Just, it's just he's just rotten in from Paul's nose. He's just he's just laughing, he? he's, <laughs> he's, he's good to have around. He's good to have around the dressing room, I believe. Oh, I told. was that has thrown me. I think that's the first time I've laughed that much on anything like that. That completely threw me. Um, right, so we've got uh, let's think of some more top, Tottenham players. So Teddy Sheridan that we saw earlier, or let's think Teddy Sheridan. Or Berbatov, that's a good shout, actually. Yeah, Sheridan or Berbatov. I could hear him and I could hear probably Sheridan because the, the, the amount of times he, you know, he was at the club, then came back to the club. I love, as much as I love Berber, you know, the minute Man United come calling, he went. Do you know what I mean? It was just, he didn't have that. I love Berbatov, by the way. But yeah, I think, I think Teddy, big old Teddy, Sher Terry Sheridan. Now, you, you asked me who I'd rather win in the cup final between Lake Lauren and Harlow Town, so I'm going to ask you some difficult questions. You can't include players like Andy Bayor and Gala, so I've already previously played for yeah, both. Yeah. You have to take five players from Arsenal now or in history to play for Tottenham. Who are they? Yeah, Thierry Henry, David Seaman. Uh, Ian Wright and oh god, is how many have I got? Three or four? Yeah, uh, yeah, it's three that you've done. So, two more. Three, yeah. So, tell them Thierry Henry, David Seaman, Ian Wright. Oh god, um, Dennis Bergkamp and. I can't do I can't do Tony Adams, unfortunately. I'm gonna have to say Martin Keown. Sorry. <laughs> Sorry, Spurs fans. I love you know how much I love my, my team, mate. You know how much I love my team. Right, so let's see how much you do love Tottenham. We're gonna to take you back. You're a you're a nine, ten year old boy. Yeah. A magic genie visits you and says, 
Anthony, you can support yeah. Tottenham Hotspur. Yeah. And you're going to work in Audi for the rest of your life. Or you can support Arsenal and you're going to be in blue. You're going to do all the things that you've done throughout no, your I'm career. Supporting, I'm supporting Spurs, man. I'm supporting Spurs. I can't <laughs> No, so you'd write, you'd write a support, you'd write mate, a... Mate, 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 my, listen, my career's come and gone. My football team stays with me forever. I can't. I just can't. <laughs> Ugh, mate, just the thought of it, mate. No, nah, mate. No, nah, no, nah, that's not happening. That's not happening. <laughs> it's a good question, though. Just quickly before you go, please give your message of support to Libby and what you would say to people if they're looking to become a donor. This is what I've got to say is uh, a bit from what coming on to what Marvin and, and Teddy Sheridan was saying. You know, if you, if you want to be a donor, order the kit. It's not evasive. You can do it. It's very, very simple. What any loose change you've got in your pocket, you know, fold it up and, you know, just just donate. Donate whatever you can. I know I'm going to donate. I'm going to find out all the information, you know, off, off camera. And then hopefully, you know, any donation helps. So dig, 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 dig. Well, thank you so much for coming on, Anthony. Thank it's you. Actually, it, for two people that have only spoke over Twitter a couple of times, so it's oh, been an amazing yeah. conversation. But thank you very much, mate. Thank you to everyone and, and keep supported for sure. <laughs>